Yehovah Malak, Olam Olamad, Yehovah Malak, Yami Yakis. The Megalogai of Yahweh Lelion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sitkanu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone, and great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath, in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of His glory, wherewith Lord God the Father has chosen us in eternity past, showing forth for us the pattern through His Son, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As the things we need to do which have to be always pleasing Him and nothing else than that. Understanding this simple fact in our lives, he says in Matthew chapter 7, in verse number 7 Ask, seek, and knock. Besides asking, seeking, and knocking, Lord God the Father is readily available to give to us many things, provided we are knowing what is the will of God the Father and doing what is his purpose or good pleasure in our lives. The word ask is atio, lower rank, or it is called to crave or desire, and it shall be given didomi, so that for one's advantage it has been given something to someone, and in the church age for our advantage we have been given Besides the completed can of scripture, the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, followed by the Trinity, and the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher in teaching to you the right word. And then here we find the word zatio, which is nothing but to seek. And then this seek is nothing but in order to find. We are not just seeking vague vain, but rather in order to find. The principle what I want to teach over here, dear brethren. Though we are not making up our lives to the matching standards of divine work in our life, yet God the Father has given to you the completed can of scripture. It's as good as in Matthew 7, 6, throwing before dogs and swines, before our impure minds. Therefore, he constantly claims to us, be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because we are in this unique and great dispensation of the church age, which will not occur again. This is the age of the ages. This is a unique opportunity for every ordinary believer in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to lay down their life to the Lord of a God and no matter live in the world, but rather live like the Word of God on this earth till we go back home. This is the age of all the ages. This is the great period of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And this is the period where Lord God the Father demands in every believer's life to do extraordinary. As he demanded in the past to the Israelites, they failed. 
The same thing in the present, he calls for us the church. And setting forth for us the pattern through his dear beloved son, as such how our life ought to be. As such how we need to execute this great and unique spiritual life. He set forth a pattern for us by his son. So that we should be the people constantly seeking in order to find what is the reality of life on this earth. But what are we doing? We are not seeking in order to find what is the truth. We are not inquiring, neither we are demanding, neither we are meditating, neither we are thinking, neither we are coming to worship the Lord God according to His demands. But rather, the word of the Lord of our God says for us, seek and you shall find a rusko. And that is, you will meet it. When you seek in order to find it, you will meet it, and they will be found by you. That's what it meant to say for us. You will be discovering it, you will be recognizing it, and you will have it in your life. And that's what you will get, and that's what you will obtain, and that's what your life will be to be pursued. So these standards are very, very important for us. And the furthermore he says, knock. And here the word for knock, cruo, that is to knock at the door or to rap. And it shall be anagio, that is to open up in various applications we shall look at. It shall be opened up for you, for your work in Christ. Therefore, dear brethren, the greater we are not asking God the Father so that we can receive it, the greater seeking God the Father so that we shall know what is the true purpose of our life. Yet God the Father, when we look in Matthew 7, 6, He has given His completed canon, His great privileges so that it comes with great responsibility in our lives to execute this true spiritual life. He has given for us everything and yet though the light is shining in the midst we are the people who are loving darkness. Do you know how to summarize this? It's very simple. In order to look these standards the present Christendom way of life we need to just consider Though the light has been given, yet we do not love the light, but we love darkness. This is very simple. He says, seek in order to find and you shall meet it. But we have not taken the steps in order to seek it. What steps we have taken? We have taken the steps of lies that we shall look automatically. Because greater time being spent to learn the wisdom of Bible doctrine, but we say, no, we don't want to learn the wisdom of Bible doctrine. We want to learn the wisdom of this world, the wisdom of this darkness, the wisdom of evil. That's what even though Eve earlier was not aware about this old sin nature activity as evil, she was good. And she thought she could know the knowledge of good and evil being inspired by Satan. In order to know evil, you have to have your old sin nature. That is what sin against Lord God. Evil Lord sin is nothing but you are sinning against the commandments of Lord God. No matter how holy or how mature you may think you are or how pure you may think you are or how righteous you may think you are in your own eyes. Because the word of the Lord of God teaches to us in a very simple way that all your righteous works are as filthy rags as the KJV, but we find in the Hebrew it is nothing but filthy rags. They think, but no, it's ministers cloth. All your good deeds are like ministers cloth, no matter however good you may be. Therefore, in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, he concludes for us, For you have been saved by faith in grace of Christ, and not of anything else or your works, so that you can boast. That's very simple logic. Even the same thing when we look as Swami Vivekananda of this country who has written, when I found my Christ, it is as good as I wash my, I, I cut my blood and pour it down upon his feet and wash because I don't want to look anything further because I have found the truth in Christ. His one touch will change me 
to change in every aspect of my life in his walking and he's going to renew me and he's going to sanctify me completely for his work. So here he also says, the way is Christ, the way is Lord of a God, the way is the truth, which is nothing but the Lord of truth, my Christ. Therefore, Christ alone could say, I am the way, the truth and the life, and no one could say that. And idiotic morons would love to add for that in whichever mannerism they think it could be best and good for them to culprit or manipulate the minds of these innocent people. Even we cannot call these people as innocent because they are not seeking what is the truth. And such morons like Zakir Naik or Sheikh Ahmad Didal or any other person who is going to come to be in the standards of criticism. They say in their generation, Christ said, I am the way. And they want to quote some prophets who said, I am the way. They want to quote someone who said, I am the way. But none could say like Christ who said, I am the way, the truth and the life. This is how Satan comes to change your mind. This is how Satan comes to make your thinking to be once again cleaved to the rubbish things of the soul called as the earth. And that soulish mind before believing in the Lord, what it is? It is still the old sin nature. That's what the knowledge of evil, it reigns in that. And that's how many people don't understand what, to what extent the knowledge of evil is controlling you. What is that knowledge of evil? Anything against the word of the Lord of a God. Right from your mind you till to the greatest details of life, whatever you may think. And this knowledge of evil, he says, for us, when I have given you even to take care of this iota upon iota and carer upon carer. And the one who breaks the least things and he thinks he can teach in the heaven, he has been called as the least one. But the one who takes care of the least and even teaches them, he is called as the greatest one. That's how the people are not able to realize the standards of this word of God. So here, dear brethren, seeking. What is that we need to seek in order to find? That is your true life. If you don't seek, you cannot be found it. You cannot meet it. So what is that you need to seek? You need to seek your true peace. You need to seek your true life. You need to seek your true power in Christ. The power which shall not be hindered by the details of life or the evil works of your thoughts. The peace that shall not be taken away, which is practiced by unrighteousness scales, and you think that's the peace. The eternal life, though it has been given for us, the word of the Lord of God demands for us to be in the fellowship so that you can daily expose yourself in the light of the word of the Lord, not in the any way details of this earth. So, dear brethren, we have so many great things to learn. So, what is it that is hindering us? In order to know that, dear brethren, we shall have a word of prayer by using the privacy of our priesthood to confess our sins, and then we shall come back and continue in John 3, 19, which is saying for us, though the light has come, the world is not ready to expose their deeds in light because they think it will be exposing their way of pleasure to be taken out from their midst. When God the Father said to Adam and Eve not to eat the tree, he knew that, that he is going to give something greater pleasure than that. But they wanted to eat that we said don't want to eat and they lost the pleasure. In the same way, dear brethren, here as well, in the midst of this great unique dispensation of the church age, in the midst of this great completed canon of scripture in this church age, we have something great and unique that the Lord our God says, do not grieve, do not squelch, do not wax, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, but rather be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and do the will of God, the Father, and yet we are not able to expose our deeds which are of darkness in the light of the word of the Lord. And as long as you hold them, as Psalms 66, 18 says to us, if I regard iniquity in my heart, I shall not prosper. And above all, in Jeremiah 48, 10, he says, cursed is the one who does the work of the Lord of a God negligently. Whenever you're having sin, you do the work of the Lord of a God negligent in a sluggish manner. And such people are cursed, he says. Because you haven't come out with your sin to expose in the light of the word of the Lord of a God. And how much of great investment has been made upon every believer in this church age. It is the cost that you and I can never pay. The cost of separation of the fellowship for three of us on the cross. Where Christ our Lord of a God cried, Eli, Eli, lama sabbatane. For three hours, because though he was not sin, was made sin on behalf of us, so that he might gain you and me through his righteousness. Because man is not what God wanted him to be in his standards. 
is not looking upon that doxa glory what we look in Romans 3 all have sinned and come short of the glory what Lord God the Father intended them that is not the man now therefore through Christ alone he can get back that righteousness Therefore, when man is not the one what is intending, are we want to still continue not to look what is in the word of the Lord of our God in order to seek it, so that in order to find it, we are just not seeking zatio, but rather we are seeking in order to find it, and when we have found it, we have to live according to the truth, as one of the greatest examples in the past was Apostle Paul, and from my country, India, you can look one of the examples, Swami Vivekananda, in his page number 500, volume 4 of Nanjadipa, he writes, if I had been born at the time of my Christ, I would wash his feet with my blood because his one word would touch and we would be changed in every aspect of our life, all aspects of life, and we will be renewed and we will be sanctified. That's the power in his word. That's the power of my Lord. Therefore, when you find him, it is better for you to put to death your old sin nature and come back and become <coughs> joining as disciples and growing up as grammatias. That's what you have to be. The same thing we read in Psalm 119 in verse number 26. I have declared my ways unto you, O Lord. What does that word declare meant to say? It is called as so fair. I will become a scribe unto you, O Lord. And teach me thy necessary choke. So that I will become to be your Lamad. I will become to be your disciple. I will come back to be in the standards of Manthano plus Didasco and a right pastor teacher. So that I would learn thy prescriptions. Choke is nothing but prescriptions or cocaine. This is what the psalmist says after knowing that his soul was cleaved unto the dust. Therefore he says, Lord, you revive me according to your word. You put me back once again to that fountain of lives in me. Till you could come back and seek in those standards of truth, you cannot be the person what Lord God the Father has intended. But how we will be, you know, dear brethren? We shall look that after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pile and wonders of the word of the Lord of our God which have been prepared and kept for us on today's date. Because every day is what Lord God the Father is looking. It's not weekly basis or monthly basis. It's day by day. Yesterday is gone. The snuff what you remove, put it in the snuff box, the burnt wick, and then you come back and do it as per the will of God the Father in doing what is most needed for us. So what do you do? You take back yesterday's experience to yesterday, but you come back today in a fresh way so that you need to come back and look in the word of the Lord of our God and do the will of God the Father. So that, dear brethren, today's account is today. Sanctify yourselves. In the privacy of your priesthood, the work which has been given to us, Numbers 3.10 says for us, anything that is an alien and which would come close enough to the altar, the only solution from God the Father is to put to death. There is no excuse for you. Therefore, dear brethren, dealing with the holy things of Lord God the Father, he says in Leviticus 5.15, why do you want to give your guilt offering to the Lord? You have to give at the cost of the tabernacle shekel, he says. The holy things are nothing but the things pertaining to our privacy of the priesthood to deal with the one who is in us, the soul and the spirit in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And these are the holy things for us today. And if these holy things have been given for us, we have to deal them with truth. Not in the standards of guilt, not in the standards of laxity or showing forth that we are doing the work of the Lord of our God negligently as Jeremiah 48.10 says. We cannot show negligence, we cannot show slackness, we cannot show the standards of what we call as laziness in our mind. Neither we can come back to deal with the holy things of Yahweh in guilty work. What is that guilty work, what we call? This guilty work is nothing but your brethren. You have been really grieving and squelching and waxing and lying to the involuntary ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And Lord God, the Father will be far away from such. Though his dwelling is permanent, his fellowship is temporary with you. Because he wants both inward and outward. Because Lord God, the Father in heaven, looks our inward nature. He doesn't look our outward nature. You may think even the minute sin of you is negligent in your sight. But Lord God, the Father says, even that minute detail, I want to make it clear. I don't want 99.99. .99, I want 100.100 percent .100 of accuracy. And that's what we ought to be. Therefore, dear brethren, using the privacy of your priesthood, get back to the fellowship. We shall learn the word of the Lord of a God. 
infinitely divine holy father the things that are prepared and kept for us on today's date we pray that lord god the holy spirit could enlighten and challenge us by this message as we're going to learn the standards what are prepared and kept for us on today's date in christ's name we pray sovereign lord amen so considering for us in the present christendom how we are walking when we are not in accord with the word of truth today's standards look for us dear brethren why they don't want to expose the standards in the word of light it says for us you know many of us want a word from god but we don't want the word of god to reign in our hearts in time of trouble you want to become to take for you the word of god but you don't want the word of god to be completely ruling over you completely taking control over you you are every thought brought into captivity for christ you don't want that you just want a word of god that's it you want a word from god but the word of god you want to you want to totally reject what a shame it will be for us when we look this is why they're not able to expose their deeds in the light of the word of christ therefore dear brethren many of us not just few but many he says many of us what they are doing they want only a word from god but not the word of god is that the fate for us today is that what we are really today therefore dear brother he says we know enough to own a bible but not enough for the bible to own us and furthermore he says that we pay the bible lip service but we fail to give it life service and furthermore in a world where the only absolute is that there are no absolutes there is little room left for the authoritative word of god as revealed in the bible the authoritative word of the lord of a god is the only infallible and inerrant and what we call as an absolute but this is a world being filled with absolute but there are no absolutes and there is no room for this authoritative word of the lord of a god to rule therefore you are seeking lord god not to find him you are not meeting him you are not getting him in up in your life that's what it is today in the present christendom therefore dear brethren when we look the standards of the word of the lord of a god many who think they have light are actually walking in darkness they are not knowing where they are going many who think they are in light but they are not at all in light they are actually in darkness and that's the great pain for us because in isa 49:4 we have such kind of a passage we should certainly prick our hearts after verse number 3 we read yesterday we're looking upon verse number 3 it says for us i shall be glorified in you it is not the word kabod but the word paar and the word paar meant to say i have to be explained through you i have to be boasted through your life but when it comes to the church age he says i have to be manifested in you it is no longer you who live but christ who liveth in you and every life of us should be the living exhibition of christ in our standards of thinking and exhibition in life therefore he says you have been predestined for this therefore you have been called to look upon the standards of this great word what he says in ephesians 4 11 through 13 katarizo you need to have the same full measure status of christ what he was so there is no excuse for us dear brethren if you still walk in the darkness thinking that you are in light because you may think you can plead arrogance and ignorance no way therefore today is the day for you to come back and look because lord god the father has given for every believer this great chance to come and look so that you can learn the true fear of lord god and dear brethren how many days more many of us we are thinking what you know dear brethren we are thinking that we are walking in light but actually we are walking in darkness if not you would put to death your all sin nature activities to the core you would not mortify it as the kjv says but rather you would go for necrosate putting to death when you put to death an object you don't get back into life you don't revive it like the dog which goes back and eats its own vomit therefore in revelation 22 to 15 we find those people who are outward what they are they are the people like dogs he says be aware about the dogs he says in philippians 3 and these dogs he says in isaiah 54 as well these are dumb dogs which cannot bark so you have to be aware about these dogs who will be outward not inside they don't have the authority to enter into the tree of life 
They don't have the authority to enter into the gates of the city of Christ. But what are these? These are dogs, he says. And why they are dogs? Because dogs love to eat back their own vomit. But the word of the Lord of God says in Colossians 3, Put to death necrosate. You are not having any power to go back and live your flesh life again. In the flesh you knew Christ. After knowing Christ you do not know that flesh. You are alien to that flesh. By that we mean the deeds of the flesh. The thoughts of the flesh. You have no place for the flesh and blood. Because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. He says for us. And those are in the flesh. They cannot please Lord God. He says for us. Therefore you are now in the spirit. You have been now called to look in the incorruptible standards. Though you are in the corruptible flesh. Therefore, dear brethren, the great chance for you to go back and look whether you're walking in light or are you still walking in darkness. Many of us today, they want only the lip service. Many of us, they don't want to have the word of the Lord of God to give you the life service. Many of us today, they are interested to think what their absolutes, which are no absolutes at all, rather than the authoritative word of the Lord of God, which is dogmatic and emphatic. And these people, they are really thinking they are ruling Christianity. And it includes even the so-called false pastor teachers in the pulpits who have come. For what purpose? They have come only for the sake of the belly. In 2 Timothy 2, 2, when we read the great commission given to Apostle, from Apostle Paul to Timothy, he says, Teach them, those who are capable and faithful of teaching others. This is what the word is in faithful witnesses to the truth. Therefore, these are the people who will be called as faithful because in return they go and teach to others and they make disciples. But in the present Christendom, the pastor himself is not a disciple. Far less he can declare his ways unto the Lord. Do you know how beautiful it is in 119.26 of the psalm? The Hebrew says, I have declared so fair Lord all my course of life they wreck all my manner of life I want to become so fair do you know what does it mean to say till I die O oh Lord I have kneeled down and write your word that's what the principle we are teaching to you in Kings in comparison with Deuteronomy 17 18 we were teaching to you in the church age in the principle of Zechariah chapter 6 verses 9 through 13 the double office given to every believer in the Christ Every believer is a priest. Every believer is a king. What is the work of the king? Deuteronomy 17, 18. To write a copy of the law. Then he's capable of ruling his life. So what does the word so fair meant to say? Or the scribe He's going to recount exactly. He's going to write down everything clearly. And the word kathab, what we use, is comparison to the word what we call as so fair. The scribes write the word of the Lord of a God. And what the psalmist say for us now, Lord, I was so foolish only to read the word, but I've lost that word as well. But now, I, Lord, I come, I declare my every step, my course of life, my manner of life to kneel down and write the word of Lord so that you teach me your prescriptions. Because my soul is cleaveth the back unto the rubbish things of the dust. But we are not considering the soul and the spirit. So he says, Lord, revive me. Lord, show forth once again that great revival in me, O Lord. I want to get back to such revival work. I want to get back to the Kaya, he says. The necessary conditions of this true life, what I want to live, O Lord, it's possible only through thy word. So you revive me because your word is the health to my bones. The word is marrow to my bones. The word is eyesight to my eyes. And thy word is what, O Lord, I survive. Therefore he says, Lord, I recount so fair. I declare every breath of my life, O Lord, I kneel down and write the word of truth. I want to be the king. Every believer ought to kneel down and write the word of the Lord of a God first in the translations. Whatever he's writing, that is what killing the beer concept. And then he's going to kill the lion concept, interlinear, Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic in the English standards, whatever it may go back. From there on again, he has to go back to kill the Goliath. When you are prepared to kill the beer, you are being prepared to kill the Goliath. That's what we read in Lamentations 2 as well. You may escape from the beer and you may come back and stuck up in the, gully, in the lion concept. 
because the beer is translation. The people may love to have the great oratory discourses depending upon the standards of beer, depending upon the standards of translations. But the original language of the scriptures in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit has been inscribed or inspired for us in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. So the right work of the pastor teacher is to go back and dig them in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. That's what when you're writing down in the lion concept, the one who will escape the beer, they will come back and stuck up before the lion, he says. So you may think your reasonings were right in the translations, but when you come back to look in the original Hebrew, they don't even match to your reasonings. So you get stuck up in the lion concept. And the so-called many men today who are writing their commentaries, knowing not the importance of this exegesis, knowing not the importance of every word to be digged accurately, knowing not what is it that we have to come to the true light in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and write their commentaries. They have come to such kind of an extension, dear brethren, to think their life is only worth enough to sell their commentaries and make money rather than if they're really the bona fide gifted pastor teachers kneel down before the presence of Lord God the Father. If you want to teach your word today, if you haven't knelt and written that word or if you haven't knelt and gone back to the daily process of exegesis, then you cannot preach, no matter whatever man you may be on this earth. You may think I can get the inspiration in such a way. I can get, I have already prepared my sermons yesterday. I have this, I have that, just throw it out, throw that stuff. Because it is the flow of Lord God, the Holy Spirit through you when you are faithfully prepared. That's what he teaches for us. Kathab exegiomai have to be the pastor teachers today, kneeling down and writing and then coming and exegeting the word, what you have knelt by written and exegeting the truth, even kneeling as well. And then you come back and teach that. These are the standards. The word what he says, I want to declare your name, O Lord. How can we be the mouth of God the Father until and as we go back and look what they have been given for us in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic? You may think you are just kidding, though no matter, you may have done your theological courses in the entire best theological seminaries and I would challenge and tell to you there would not be any better theological seminaries than those theological seminaries which came in the 17th, 18th century dedicating them to the true languages of the scriptures of Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and sending them as missionaries to the entire world like the ale, how word and that mouth. You may have your Princeton, your Fuller, your Southern Baptist, your XYZ Methodist. Who cares about that? Including the present DTS. The emphasis have to be always Kathab exegiomai. The emphasis have to be always if you are a preacher, go back and learn the word of God of the Lord in the original language of the scriptures. Come and work and teach the truth. If ever you have guts being born to one parent, by that I mean one womb, the brethren, and the sperm of my Christ. Because we have been for Christ, we have been in the Christ, we have been made for Christ, we have been working for Christ, we are everything in Christ. In Christ we speak the truth, he says in 2 Corinthians 2, 17, and we don't peddle or corrupt the word of the Lord of our God for our prophet, but rather in Helicrinias, in the nature, and in the before God, we teach the truth, he says, for us. We are not as many who corrupt, so you are in Christ, in the sight of Christ you speak the truth because he is our witnesses. Not your translations. Therefore people are walking in darkness and these people are also not interested to come back and look what is light. They are so happy to make up their lives in darkness because they are worried where the secret sins of them will be exposed. Just at least remember a man, whether he was an atheist or a believer, we'll know him when we go back home. The man Swami Vivekananda who says, I will cut and pour my blood upon his feet and wash his feet. Such kind of a serious commitment today, we don't find in our own Christian pastor teachers to call them present as reverence, reverence and doctorates. For whom to impress you will keep that reverence? To impress people, to impress your stores where you go and purchase your groceries or you want to impress before bank managers that you're a reverend <laughs> kidding yourselves dear brethren 
You are not here to please man. If you are here to please man, the illustration already I have given you back in my South India part of this India country, where they come, they love to eat a lot of rice and dal. You consider rice to be your human excreta. You consider dal, which will be some sort of a waterish like. You consider that for your own urine. And when you mix that, when you mix and eat, that is the combination of rice and dal. That will be your fate when you are impressing man at the judgment seat of Christ. You are not only eating here that human excreta mixed with urine, but you will be also eating your own life being burnt off at the judgment seat of Bhima throne of Christ because you are not in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. And Lord God the Holy Spirit, when it draws its sword out, it shall be not put back without saying the blood, he says. By that we meant to say, when we speak in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit, it is going to achieve its work. Even Isaiah 55, he says, the words what I speak as the rainwater falls follows from the heaven and doesn't return to me until it could go back and wet the soil. So is the purpose of the word of Lord God, the Holy Spirit and his work through our lives as illustrated through that sword in Jeremiah 48b, 4810b when he says for us, the sword what has been removed, it shall not be put back without seeing the blood of the enemy. And we are the greatest enemies for Christ today being believers in the Lord because we are traitors. And you know what is our fate we look like? When God the Father would talk about the people of Israelites, it certainly pricks our heart. Because they were a pattern set forth for us so that we could learn from their failures. But in Isaiah 49.4, when we read the fate of these Israelites, we also should be pricked. Do you know what does it say for us in the Hebrew? It teaches to us, dear brethren, each and every word is important over here. It says for us, and I... I said, for nothing I labored. And that's what the word for us. I amarte, rick the word. Do you know what is the word rick? A worthless thing. And the word for labored is yaga. I labored such kind of a wearisome labor. Or I have labored, sweating out in such kind of a great manner. Even the same book of Isaiah chapter 5, it describes for us in the futurity how these people will go for evangelism. We find that even the horse or the power of the strength of a lion, he describes, they shall not take rest because this man is not going to lose in his lion. That's a different part because now they have to learn the lesson when we are going through this great process. Till the rapture of the church, the Israelites will not come back to fulfill the 70th week of Daniel. But there we find a description in Isaiah chapter 5 saying to the point, how they would work in the tribulation but that's a second story but when we look over here it teaches for us in Isaiah 49 4 the conclusion I said for nothing of a worthless thing I spent my energy will that be your fate when you go to the judgment seat of Christ thinking that you're walking in light but you're still in darkness for what you're laboring in Christ Therefore, he says for us, I have not labored in vain, neither I have ran in vain. What I do, I take hold the word of the Lord of a God and shine, shine like light luminaries in the midst of this perverse and crooked nation generations. That's what he teaches to us very carefully, dear brethren. So how do you say you have not labored in vain, neither ran in vain in Philippians 2? Because you hold forth in you the word of light, the word of God. And therefore, in Philippians 4, again, he says, I don't desire any gift from you, but rather I want to add it to your account. The fruit, what you give to me, it's not the gift, what I want from you. I want to add it to your account so that tomorrow when you stand, it should be saying that you haven't been laboring for rain. That's the same scenario here. When he's saying in Isaiah 49.3, I shall be glorified in them, but I said, I said, for nothing I labor. How many of the people really explained about my Christ in the past? How many of the people who have been called to look upon for the work of going and doing the evangelism to the entire part of the world, but they did not? The Israelites failed, except the first success through Abraham, the first missionary, when he finds some converts, we can look them in the chapter of the way how he took them to fight and to release Lot. And then certain some of the people who were changed. And afterwards what we look when they have been delivered from the people of these standards of Exodus. We constantly find the missionary work not being given the importance. The missionary work not being taken to the core as a serious condition of their life. We constantly find that, isn't it? 
In the same way he says, I labored for naught. Or I for naught I labored. Rick Yaga. The word Rick meant to say worthless. For naught he has been translated. But he says, worthless thing. I labored. I spent my energy. I gave everything to that. I wanted to be glorified, I wanted to be beautified, I wanted to show them and explain the reality of the word of Christ through the mind of Christ. But what did I find? I labored for nothing. I spent my entire energy for worthless things. For example, you are buying some trash. Because we do find that in many of the TV channels, particularly through National Geographic channel, they come back and say, purchasing something from the backyard where they have been kept for a long time and then he says I've invested so much of money on that and after selling these important things I got so much of money back so no profit no loss something you want to prove in that the, 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 the topic name is something which I forgot so he says like that so he's investing something over there and he's getting back when he's buying the trash in that which is not usable is throwing out which are usable is keeping them and he's going to sell them back as antique pieces for them who are readily available to purchase them. You can find that in National Geographic channel. You can go back and look into that. Or in History TV 18, you will get that. So these are the people. They knew very well where to invest. They knew very well when the bid is going on, up to what rate they can invest that. Because they realize what is the worth of that after taking a look. But today, Lord God the Father has seen long back and has invested in us. Saying that we will move from glory to glory. Saying that we will move to fulfill not only the agape love, but we will manifest the philos love. But the Israelites, what they did, he invested into them much. But it is turning out to become the thing called as a worthless thing they turned out. I simply invested on them. Of course, they will do their duty in the 70th week after the rapture of the church including with the one like 44,000 Jews, followed by the angelic realm, the two witnesses. That's a different story. But what they would have done before the first advent of my Christ, they didn't do it. So what did he say? He said, worthless things. Rick Yaga. And that's the fate of every Christian today as well when we look. When they want to give lip service and not a life service. When they want to consider the authoritative word of the Lord of God as not absolute. And they want to make up their absolute as absolutes which are no way any concern to be called as absolutes at all. Because the authoritative word. If Christ our Lord of God is the head of the church, it is his word that has to reign. It is his practice that has to come. It is his divine standards that we need to look not what the denominations have designed, not what the people have come together to perform. This is the fate of the present Christendom for worthless things. Rick Yaga. And if the Lord God would say to us, I said, do you know what a pain it would come out? For Rick Yaga. And the word for us here it says, and I, I said, Twice he uses the word. And that's what the people today they are in the present Christendom not able to understand. Though they have been called to seek so that they can find. Because it is easily available in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Because Lord God the Holy Spirit calls you to cleanse yourself and come back and to be in truth. Therefore he says, then I said, Amer. The word meant to say, I utter or to say into his mind to think. The same thing he says in Genesis 6. Why at least I made this man? What is the reason for that? He says, there's continually evil right from his childhood. He's continually evil. In the same manner here he says, I said, I woe. And the word meant to say for him to say, to command or to teach. That I have labored in vain. That's the translation. But it says for us in the Hebrew over here. Rig. Yaga, the word rig meant to say for worthless things, I spent my energy. And how cunning is the man when you go back to that TV show in NGC saying to the point, 
They go for a bid after looking a good chance in that. But at Lord God the Father being gracious unto us to say, at least they will repent and come back even the same chance what he gave to Jonah to the people of Nineveh. Did they come back? No. What did they do? They lost. When they heard for 40 days, they said they repented and they came back. But afterwards again, the same judgment which has been postponed for 150 years came back on them. The same thing Lord God the Father knew in eternity past what these people will be in his only saint knowledge because he is the one who said I am going to declare to you the end from the beginning and yet the conclusion of the Israelites we look over here before the first advent of my Christ what they were it is an absolute worthless thing what he invested yet because of the promise of those eternal ones like David Abraham he says he is going to fulfill them without any conditional those are unconditional promises because of the things what his father Abraham did. The man who has been called the father of faith. The man what he did in Genesis 18 asking Lord you rest under this tree and I will fetch and give you the things. The love what he showed forth to the Lord God. The fear what he showed forth to the Lord God. The faith what he showed forth to the Lord God in giving a sacrifice of his own son not hesitating. And against hope he was believing in the Lord God, the promises he said, the one who gave the promise is nothing but the one who gave that promise, the promiser is greater than this promise. So I latch on to the promise and not to the promise. Maybe that love made, even the same thing with Davidic. The man who was after Lord God's own heart in looking upon in 2 Samuel chapter 17, when we look that great fight of 1 Samuel chapter 17. And he said, who is this man who is defiling the name of my living Lord? Defiling the name of my living Lord. Can we have that jealousness if anyone defiles the name of my Christ? And we know very well we don't have that jealousy in us. Because we say we are still in darkness. We say we don't want to expose our, our deeds in light. Maybe because of them he has still been persistent. But the remaining people, he says, they were not like King David. They did not walk like King David. They was not even closer enough like King David. Though we have the greater son, King David, to come again. That is my Christ sitting at the right hand of God, the Father, now till his enemies could become his footstool. There was none like King David, he goes on to teach. And yet, the kings, rejecting the words of the true prophets, when Baruch writes about his will to guard the father on behalf of Jeremiah when he's dictating him, the same man get fears again. But in Isaiah, in Jeremiah chapter 44, we look the promise given to him in chapter 45, not 44. In 45, he says for us that about Baruch, thou said, Woe is to me now, for the Lord hath added grief to my sorrow. And this is the way how this man is adding grief. He said, Woe is to me. I fainted in my sighing and I find no rest. This shouldn't have been in the terms for him to look. Though the prophets were writing to them through Baruch as well, who has been his handman to write. The people said that time, Woe is to me, I have been added grief. They did not completely trust the word of the Lord of our God, yet he was being said, you will be delivered from such pestilence. Don't worry, don't get annoyed yourself. That's the greatness of my Lord. But here, the way how he was annoying himself, he would have shown forth that fear towards the people of the Israelites and he would have said, Lord, show them the grace. What is my life? If I live, it is for Christ. If I die, it is for Christ. What difference does it make? Because the purpose is Jeremiah, not with Baruch. Baruch was just a man who writes. Even the people, when we read that in Matthew 23, we look how the Jerusalem killed the prophets. So they did not accept the word of the Lord. Even the kings were pursuing the prophets to be killed. That's the incident what we find in Jeremiah 45 in comparison to Jeremiah 40 when he writes to them what were the things they were been doing and he says, you shall be vanishing off. 
and they say we shall not vanish but in return we shall vanish the prophet itself it is because of jeremiah we find such kind of a great things for us as a difficult standard because that will be the fate of a true pastor teacher when the people come to pray for you in, in asking to pray for you and you pray in accord with the word of the lord of a garden if they don't come to the will of god the father they will suffer and when such righteous things are happening people hate such pastor because they say we don't have any blessing from that pastor because this pastor is putting them back to look what is the will of god the father and not to play the gimmicks and not to play the tricks not to use your gracious time in vain this pastor is teaching them be careful but they say no we don't want to be careful we want to give money bribe to the pastor <laughs> and you know why there's so much fearing about pastors we find a passage in numbers 3 which says lord god to moses count all the levites right from first the first month what they are because this is a special category of the levites because lord god the father says the levites what has given the priests what they were they were nothing but the messenger of lord god of hosts he says in malachi 2:7 through 9 therefore he does his work through them and in almost 3 7 he says i will not hide anything from my prophets i will reveal to them everything so he knows very well what is going to do through them so he wants them right from the first month what they are i want them to be counted he says and the people would come and they took a chance when the golden calf incident took place and they were the people who took for royalty stand there and later on we look this same people falling after the babylon captivity no longer to be the real worth levites for lord god except the line of zedekiah and therefore he says pharisees scribes and the sadducees what you are and therefore he says you say swearing by the gold that is in the temple is great and not by the temple which sanctified that gold they changed the laws interesting talmon mesna they changed completely maybe the same thing is happening today in us lord god the father chooses those faithful pastor teachers who have been faithfully prepared and when they come and tell to the truth the people doesn't want to listen to the truth how many people you will hardly find watching these videos those who truly fear lord god in the principle of john 6 35 38they that are of god the father god the father sends them and they will hear the words of lord god until unless they have been sent by god the father they will not come to listen to these words how many people you will find you will find very few people isn't it this is the way that is the world is looking upon what they want to have the sugar coated preaching and what they want to top with the untempered mortar and they don't want to break up their fallow grounds this is what the world is today the world is looking in those terms the world is realizing in those terms but when ever we say come back you listen or you will perish the people don't want to love that the people want to love something which could please their ears their itching ears having themselves to develop those pastor teachers who will not make them to endure in sound bible doctrine and this is what the world is all about today looking and seeking and searching those men who are not at all worthy enough because like people like priest hosea 49 he said long back like the people they are they will be the priests And what a grievous thing it is for us to look though the word of the Lord of God says appointing those pastor teachers to teach them nothing but the truth but they rejected the truth and they want to kill the false pastor teachers they were, the false prophets in the past they endured the true pastors they killed them with stones right starting from the way how he says the line of Seth from from the line of uh, Adam's son Abel till to the last one Zacharias he says he mentions them you kill you kill you kill you kill that's the great favorism through our humanity which we are doing to the right people of god or the angel of the lord because the messenger is nothing but the angel of the lord he says now we have to look upon the genuinity of these angels if they're not coming back and teaching you in the original hebrew greek and aramaic they're not true pastors no matter whatever great ministry they may have 
at least the crowd, he says for us in 2 Timothy 2, to be careful whether they're really faithful or not. If they're really faithful, they go to go back and teach the word of the Lord. Those who don't corrupt, those who don't peddle, but rather with sincerity, they will teach the truth. To such, they are called as faithful. At least look that genuinity test. But these people will not change. These people will not learn. These people will not understand. The reasons are very simple, dear brethren. They don't love the truth, that's it. If they would really fear my Lord, they would expose themselves, their deeds in the light of the word of the Lord of a God. Therefore, he sent them the pastor teachers. He sent them the prophets. But they were not true prophets for them. They went along to look false prophets. Therefore, we look at a great passage in Jeremiah 44, rejection of Lord's word, from verses 23 to 27. For us, we shall not listen to your words, they said to Jeremiah on the face. We will go back and bake cakes to the Queen of Heaven. We will do the things that are good for the Queen of Heaven and not according to the word of the Lord of our God. Because when we were doing good to the Queen of Heaven, we find everything satisfactory. We did not like anything. We did not have this pestilence. We did not have this famine. We did not have this war. And you know the wrath of the Lord God says through Jeremiah, you will come to know whose words will stand. In the same way, if this Baruch would look, he would have said, Lord, with the grievous pain I am. That's what Lord is declaring, the mind of Baruch over there. And Lord writes through Jeremiah to say, this is what Baruch thought. I find no rest to my soul. I am growing wearisome. Because of the affliction of the Lord God, he added burden to me. <laughs> That's how the people today as well they are in Christ. Daily kneeling down and writing the word of the Lord of a God and going back to declare the ways of Lord God. Whether they hear a phobia, whether they look or not, it's not a burden. Because Lord God the Father is going to take us the burden, he's going to give us the kneecaps, the kneecaps of iron. In Daniel 2, we read that for the structure. Because the honor and the glory of Lord God has to be made to the highest, no matter whatever it is the world may think. But we go through the word, and he said for us so fair, I declare my ways unto thee, O Lord. I have made up my life, O Lord, to be in the standards of kneeling down and writing the word of the Lord of our God till I die. That's what the psalmist says in Psalm 119 in verse number 26. I declare my ways, my course of life, like a software, like a scribe, I kneel down and write the word of the Lord of a God. Lord, you teach me. I want to become your disciple. I want to learn the word from you, not from the flesh and blood. Because he says for us, no flesh and blood can teach to us as the Spirit teaches to us. No flesh and blood can reveal to you except that it has been revealed to you from the Father. That's what Christ the Lord of a God said to Peter. No flesh and blood can come back and train us up apart from the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through those divine mentors as well as human mentors who would, could be our guide in the earlier time to lead us to truth. While we are still in the Paideas, Brephos stage. And what do the people do today? They don't want to look what is the truth. The reasons why they don't want to look, because they don't want to expose themselves, what is the true word of the Lord of a God. They want to be like the nominal Christians, conventional Christians, the Christians wherewith they are happy to please people. And if you are happy to please people, remember the rice and dal, human excreta plus urine that you are going to eat. Pleasing people. Therefore he says, I, I said, I cried out with the pain in my heart. For nothing or a worthless thing I labored. And then he says, The vigor of me, the power, the capacity, that is what coach, what is able to produce something better. My power I spent, it has been perished in coas and vanity. That is what it says, tohu plus hebel. The word tohu meant to say for us, nothing which is without form. It doesn't have any form. And vanity is nothing but unsatisfactory. Where did I spend my strength? Tohu hebel. Tohu, the word meant to say for us nothing without form. And hebel, what it is unsatisfactory. 
Tohu are meant to say the people who haven't come to look what is the will of God the Father. And Hebel meant to say those though they know the will of God the Father, they did not produce the maximum glorification for Christ conforming to the image of his dear beloved Son. And I spent my vigor, that is what the power, the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in this rotten flesh. Since one prayer prayed by Christ my Lord, he has given to us such kind of a great privileges. If not, we are more worse than those dogs and swines of Matthew 7 and 6. I spent my energy, that's what it meant to say. I spent my vigor. I spent my power. For what? For nothing. Tohu, because you haven't come to look what is the will of God, the Father coming as a nominal Christian. You came and you went and you became like the goat. And those people who are Hebel, he says, unsatisfactory. It's like the way, mine, mine, tikel. I have weighed you in the scales, but I yet found you to be wanting for me. Even that is also unsatisfactory. I have not been clearing my thirst. That's what they did. It was an unsatisfactory work by the Lord. If not, he would have introduced for us the church. If not, he would have not made us, the church, to be there available for Lord's work. He wouldn't have introduced us. There would have been no need to introduce this church age. Therefore, for that word Hebel, unsatisfactory, this is what we are in the Lord. He did that and he said that about the Israelites, but we are more than Hebels today. Our every life giving back to account to grace of Lord God, not to use in vain. We are giving to use only for vain, 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 vanity of vanities and vain glory. And that's what the world is today for us. Doesn't you look that? How many of them are disciples in the church? How many of them have grown up to become grammatias? How many of them are in return going and making disciples of all the nations? Does your life seem satisfactory in the sight of the Lord? Are you satisfied by eating well in the grace of the Lord? That which is nothing but sheer rut. Thinking that this food I should eat in my life, that food I should eat in my life. Because you know, now the Trump is coming to my country, India, the USA president. And yesterday in the news we look. The dishes what he can eat, there are many varieties of dishes what they're going to prepare for Trump. And particularly in my country, India, you have a lot of dishes. With a lot of spices being put together. Because we are really great in that. Southern part, we are having one specialization. Northern part, we are having one specialization. Eastern and Western part, we are having one, one specialization where you look, you will not find your entire life to be satisfied. If you would eat the varieties of the foods, what they make, or the dishes, what they prepare and keep. And the word for us, whether Trump in his tour for this country, India, during these days, whether we may be satisfied to have lunch with the Prime Minister or dinner with the uh, state pertaining to the Governor or the standards what we call. Whether he may be satisfied or not. But surely there will be people who say we are not satisfied, we are unsatisfactory yet. Because our soul and flesh longs more. But in two days or three days of trial we cannot spend much. Isn't it? He will be also unsatisfactory looking upon the dishes. Looking upon the entire part of my country, India, north, west, east, south. In the same way, Christ our Lord of our God has many things to be fulfilled. What is the length, the breadth, the height, the depth? What is that manifold wisdom of my Christ to be manifested in each and every believer? To show to them that you are in the unique age, you have been given the greatest power of all time. You have been given the greatest privilege of all time. You have been given the completed kind of scripture of all time. You have been given much and expected much. Therefore, that's what he says in Luke 12. The labors, what they have to be. Much is given to you and much is expected from you. Or will you make the Lord God to be unsatisfactory by your work? That's what you and I should look very carefully. Therefore, he says for us from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, not even to let go. Iota upon iota, carer upon carer, but rather rightly do the word of truth and do the will of God the Father to the highest. Tomorrow when you go back home, you should say, yes, Lord. From Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, digging it, not even to let go. Even the least of iota or least of Carrera, Lord, we did the work faithfully, accurately. 
Lord, search us diligently. Look unto us diligently. Give us that satisfaction in our soul, O Lord, so that you could be satisfied through our lives on this earth. If not, let the affliction of you be upon us, O Lord. The pain, not as a burden that we are being burdened by your work, but as a burden that your work is not being completed through our lives. Constant pain. And what you will have a face to go back and show to Lord God, in spite of giving to you such great privileges, to say, Lord, I haven't done your work completely. What face you will have to stand before Lord God the Father tomorrow? We could say, Lord, we are unprofitable slaves. That which is our duty to be done, we are doing it. Lord, if you have been here, you have done hundred times perfect work than us. But yet you trusted this useless, worthless people. Who are always Tohu and Hebel. And the vigor of the Lord, he says, the power of the Lord Kovach. He has spent it in vain, he says for us. And then today, are we in the same terms? Why? Because we don't want to expose our life in the light of the word of the Lord of our God, but we want to live a life in the mirror of lies. And then he says, those who don't do the work of the Lord, who have been worthless, who haven't come to become the glory of the Lord, but they have become coarse and vanity. That's what Tohu and Hebel on that rig Yaga of the Lord, because of that great coach of Lord God being spent, Kalal, on the vain glory. Do you know what does we need to look? Surely, he says, but in fact, indeed, judgment of me is with Yahweh. A vindication of Lord God is with me. Second Thessalonians 1 7 teaches to us the judgment of the Lord God, the vindication of Lord God, like a blazing fire upon them, those who haven't known to do the will of God the Father, and those who haven't believed the gospel of my Christ. Be careful about that. Be careful about these things. Judgment, he says. Judgment, he goes on to teach. This man is realizing judgment is with Yahweh. The Israelites have to realize. The church have to realize our judgment is with Yahweh. And wages of me with Elohim, the word Elohim 430 accord. Or the reward is with me with the Elohim. That's what we meant to say when we are not able to match the humanity of Christ and his work for us in the church age. Therefore, predestination for us, Romans 8, till Christ could be formed in you. That's the reward. To become in the full mature stature of Christ, that's the reward, Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. And the reward is with the Elohim, he says. If you don't meet the standards, judgment. The reward is with Elohim, he meant to say, if you don't meet to become like Christ, if you don't meet the standards of the word of the Lord of our God, then there is a judgment for us. And Lord God the Father doesn't take anyone apart from Christ. Therefore, 1 John 2, 6, he writes for us, it is no longer you walk like Paul or Peter or XYZ. He says you walk to walk like Christ. Therefore, dear brethren, many are thinking they are still walking in light, but they haven't even come close enough what is to look, what is the light. Dear brethren, the vindication of Yahweh he says, since I have given you much and you have expected much, you haven't done. Your lives are unsatisfactory to me. Your standards of thinking are not coming to my standards of thinking, which are far higher than the earth, which is the heaven. And those thinking standards will not come till you go back and look in the original language of the scriptures and dig every word and teach. And if you don't make up your life in those work, what Lord God the Father has intended, then your life is vain and vague. Because you need to look for your rewards in the humanity of my Christ, 430, Elohim. That's what he has introduced himself to this world, to the people, the earth. We would have added over here, Yehovah, Yehovah, twice. But he says, no, first he says, judgment is with Yehovah, that is God the Father, the Trinity. And a reward is with Elohim, the way how he has introduced God for us. Right from the beginning, he has introduced to this world as Elohim, 430, not 410. So at this, that Elohim, he says, you can become like gods. Again, the same word, Elohim, 430, but small g now. Earlier, 430, capital G, referring to Lord God. 
Yahweh Elohim. And he's coming to the people, he says, you are also Elohim 430. Because of the saving work of my Christ on 410 code in his humanity. So our reward has to match God Elohim. Our reward has to be that we have been like gods on this earth by knowing the scriptures. Our reward has to be when we open up our mouth as Christ is in us. That is what we are speaking, the grace of the Lord. And that for he says for us, when you open up your mouth as divine oracles being seasoned with grace. When we open up our mouth, we have to be the standards of Bible doctrine. When we open up our mouth, we are inexcusable because we have to teach the word of the Lord of a God like a sharp sword. Because... O Kurias Egos, he says in Philippians 4 5, in Revelation 22 10, he says, Kurias Egos Estin, or Kairos Egos Estin, the time is near. Dear brethren, when the time is near for us, how many days more we want to kid ourselves in the standards of lies? Come back and wake up to the reality. We need the word of God, not a word from God. We need the true life service, not a lip service. We need Lord God's authoritative word of God, what he has given to exegeomai the truth in the original language of the scriptures, not the sheer arts of oratories, what the people are trying to feed you up with the so-called human excreta to be calling for you in your terms. Dobbing you with untempered mortar, followed by dobbing you with their human excreta pleasing nature. Dear brethren, do not waste your gracious time, which has been given for you. The greatest power ever given to you, the greatest peace ever given to you, the greatest eternal life ever promised and gave to you at the moment of salvation itself. Do not become like these Israelites in Isaiah 49.4 when we read, For nothing I labored. A Rik Yaga. For worthless things I spent. For worthless things I labored. I went to weary. And my vigor, Koak, I spent upon vanity and koyas, or Tohu and Hebel. Tohu, no form at all. That's what Genesis 1 1 is Tohu or Bohu when we look. No form at all. And Hebel, no satisfaction at all. Unsatisfactory. Though you may think at one end you haven't come to look what is the word of the Lord of a God. At the other end he's saying you have been unsatisfactory to me. Therefore, the power what I gave to you with Kovach, the vigor what I spent, the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You have not given to be filled with the word of the Lord of a God. Therefore, it's not operating in you. Therefore, I spent my vigor, he says, upon them who are formless and upon them who are proving to give me not satisfactory results, but unsatisfactory results. And being a human on this earth, you want to be satisfied with the physical foods and the physical lusts. Then how much more God the Father would look who has created us for his spiritual Lusts to be fulfilled in our lives. That's the word desire, chapets. And in Isaiah 53, we look, it is he alone who fulfilled the desire of God the Father, that is my Christ. And he wants many sons unto his glory to fulfill his lust. Will you or not? If you still walk in darkness, you can never fulfill his lust. You have to walk in truth, in light. Because those who are born of Lord God, they cannot practice sin, says 1 John 3, 9. And they walk in the mirror of the word of the Lord of a God to his highest glory on this church age. Dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short. Yet the responsibility laid on upon our shoulders is too large. Do not waste this glorious grace of Lord God the Father in vain. And ra but rather, look into the truth. Come back to the truth and understand what is the right reality wherewith you have been called in the church age to the praise of his glory in his grace. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide. Life is too short, and the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. And remembering the summary of Isaiah 49.4 in comparison with Jeremiah 45.3, where you stand in the pain of Lord God, thinking it is a burden or 
it is the burden that many people haven't followed to conform to the image of his dear beloved son that is left to you dear brethren you think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as lord god the holy spirit could lead us to the praise of his glory in his grace with our head bowed and eyes closed the closing moments have been dedicated to those who are here without christ without hope and without eternal life inaudible telling to lord god the father in the privacy of your soul that you believe upon my christ my lord my rock my savior that is the moment itself we shall have this eternal truth this eternal truth for us for very simple believing christ you shall be saved whereas for the believer the greatest part is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of bible doctrine wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth and the truth shall set you free and for the pastor teachers the greatest part is to carry so thon lagan herald the word in season and out of season because the diamond from my witnesses where you have been called the number one diamond from my witnesses in well infinity for the bible in our hands and number two diamond from my witnesses are hearers if there are no hearers dear brother and do not worry besides nature the entire angelic coast will be our witnesses and what is our work our work is to rightly divide the word of truth no matter how about the chips may fall so which way you want to go dear brother and you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great unique privilege it is, O Lord, to give our life as a life service unto Thee, unto Thy absolute standards of the authority to word, and not the absolutes what the world has prepared. At the same time, O Lord, the people are giving up their lip service, and they want word from God, and not the word of God to rule over them. So, Father, help us to train them up once again to do Thy will, so that Father, putting back as the Gardener requested in Luke chapter thirteen, give one more day, O Lord, one more year, so that he could go back and dig and do the things pertaining to their fruit. If they don't come to their fruit, O Lord, cut it off. In the same way, manner, dear Father, we are asking once again on this earth to give us permission to teach them according to the word, the original language of the Scriptures, and you, O Lord, lead us and be in front of us as your warrior and take care to once again establish in each and every pulpit Thy word, because we know very well, O Lord, when you stand up, the world trembles, and what is Satan, O Lord? Your called event that sat unto trample upon our our feet give us this great energy and strength o lord and the power of the power so that o lord we could go back and do thy will and establish it each and every pulpit once again thy true standards in the authoritative speech what have given for us to teach them not like those pharisees and scribes but the one who has this authority of lord god the father in heaven in the power of lord god the holy spirit in the ministry of lord and savior jesus christ doing thy will So Father, we commit everything into the mighty hands, such as diligently see if there is an offence, where as leaders in the way of everlasting truth. And Father, we sincerely ask in Thy sight before God, as well as before this nature as well, to do Thy will alone and nothing else than that. Only pure for Thy glory, which is due unto Thee, which has been lacked in all of these ages, at now through us help it to be manifested clearly till the time we could come back home, and that time could continue till the rapture of the church, when we establish once again to Thy glory in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Spirit. To this extent, we pray, Father, may Lord God the Holy Spirit could enlighten challenges by this message. In Christ's name, we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.